Okay, so instead of uh, instead of grading, printing all your papers out and grading them, uh, what I've done is graded them on the computer online. And so you've submitted a digital copy into a safe assignment. We'll talk about what a safe assignment is for a minute. But go ahead and go into Blackboard and go to your grade book. Then the only item in our, our grade book for the on-campus class is this uh, paper. And so you, you should see um, your grade, which everybody that submitted it basically got the 10 points and what I'm doing with the grade is that I believe that your overall the final essay will be worth 75 points and 10 of those 75 is your rough draft that you submitted for me so as long as you submitted something that was worthwhile I gave you the 10 points and then I'll go back at the end and, and uh, when you submit your final copy and grade it I'm pretty sure it'll be worth 75 points so if you click on your grade then it should take you into so when you click on your grade it should take you into there where you will see, um, first of all, you'll see a submitted file that I returned back to you. If you scroll down, currently attached file, go ahead and uh, you should have that document there. Go ahead and open up that document. Go ahead and open up that document and you will see, um, basically I went through using the commenting tool of Word and did that. Now some of you that are on the Macs, some of you that are on the Macs may, does it work okay? Okay. okay, so you should be able to see on the right side the comments that I wrote. You may need to zoom in. Uh, the comments do kind of write in fairly small, so you may need to uh, zoom in. Uh, but basically, take a few minutes here, and I want you to go through and read uh, the comments that I put in there, and then we will talk about those um, in just a second. Okay, one of the first things I want to show you I'm going to show you a variety of things. Some may apply to you, some may not. If you'll go back into the gradebook, please. Go back into, so minimize your Word document. You don't necessarily have to close it. Just minimize and get back into uh, the grade that I gave you. You'll notice that I had you submit these in what was called safe assignment. Um, safe assignment. And safe assignment, we're all teachers here. This is instructional technology. Safe assignment is a software program. It's actually a building block that builds into Blackboard that when you submit your paper through safe assignment, actually it, it checks it for plagiarism. Okay? It goes through and any, um, it checks it against any website that, it checks it against any website, any paper that has been submitted of any university, school, whoever that is using safe assignment across the country, um, it checks it against all those things. And so it's a great, great plagiarism tool. Uh, Turnitin.com is another type of one. Safe Assign is uh, what we happen to use with Blackboard. And so anytime that I have you submit papers, that's not a secret by any means, uh, but anytime that I have you submit papers, I always submit them through that so I can check with plagiarism because it happens a whole lot. And it actually very a couple times in my experience so far has it very has it happened just outright just plagiarized um, most of the time um, I'm finding that students don't understand the rules in terms of writing um, and so uh, it's actually a great teaching tool as well but if you look here on the uh, on your grade there you'll see it says the essay report and there's a little checkbox and it'll give you a percentage, okay, matching 4%. Uh, in this particular class, majority of you were matching fine, and that's great. Uh, if you'll click on the essay report, it'll open up the safe assignment report. Okay, so as you'll look here, Brittany, are you okay with me using yours? Okay, and so um, just because it picks up from safe assignment doesn't mean that it's absolute, It's plagiarism, okay? Uh, here, I'm glad Brittany has a great example. Here, it picks up another student's paper from Jacksonville State University, okay? As I scroll down, it'll show me highlighted what that happens to be. And in this case, it happens to be um, part of her works cited page, okay? So um, that's fine, okay? Obviously, what, what you put in your works cited, a reference is going to read the same from anybody that submits a reference around the country that's going to pick up the same so that's okay there's no problem with that and so you know you have to take into account the the percentage it's not like I could, it's not like it's just a blank rule if you have more than 12 percent you've plagiarized too much okay as you look up here most of yours were fine and this was kind of a personal philosophy paper so you know there wasn't a lot of that as you start getting into more research papers uh, that I've seen submitted I see more of it uh, but an example up here, if you look, this is 
another student from a different class. Okay, and so uh, this part particular had 13%. But as I scroll down here, a nice thing is, is that I, as I go over it, I can click and it'll show me the uploaded manuscript and this is what this particular student wrote and this is what the internet site found. Now, there's no guarantee that it's from that particular website. There's no guarantee that this student went to that website. It's just matching it. And in this case, it's only saying it's matched 67%. So, um, in terms of plagiarism, in terms of using other people's writing, the rule is what? Okay, but how many words can you use? Okay, as a general rule, three or more words is plagiarism. Okay, and so, and it, and okay, so we have three or more words, but then it's still plagiarism if you just take and jumble around the words. Okay, even if you mix this, or you know, you maybe you add a, a single word in between. Oh, that's not plagiarism. Okay, and I remember as a student doing that. Um, and that still is plagiarism, okay? And so um, keep that in mind. And so it may only match 67%, but if basically what you've done is just taken and, and reworded or just moved some words around. It still is plagiarism. If you want to use word for word from another source, you have to do what? Put it in quotation marks. If you want to use uh, directly from another source, that's fine. You can do that. You have to put it in quotation marks and and cite it. Okay? It's not good enough just to cite alone. Just because you put a cite there, the citation or reference doesn't mean that you can still do word for word. Okay? You have to have a combination of two quotes and that. Uh, so as you can see here, I think on this one, there you can see upload a manuscript compared to the internet source. Uh, that is word for word. Now, as an instructor, I still have to go in and look because it doesn't take into account if the student did put quotation marks. Okay? And so in this case, um, he, he did or didn't. Um, and so I still need to go into the actual paper and look. And so it's not a blanket thing. There's a, some variation there. But it is still a good tool um, that works well. If you, even if you do a bunch of quotations, okay, if 50% of your paper is quotes from somebody else, then that's, that's not a good thing. Now, getting into the actual formatting of your paper, um, I saw a lot of errors, and actually a lot of the errors tend to be from actually the way that Microsoft 2007 does things. You don't need a title page for this particular assignment. You don't have to have a title page if you are using the MLA style. The example that I gave you in Epsilon and this example here is the MLA style where you basically have these headers here with the information for you. If you have this, then you don't need a title page. If you're using an APA style where you don't include these things here and all you have is a title, then yes, put a title page on the first page and that's fine. Uh, and you can look for examples on the web in terms of title page. I'm not too picky. Basically, you need to have this information. But uh, in all things, you don't enlarge the text. Your text should stay the same, 12-point font throughout the whole document. So even if you do a title page, don't make your title nice and big or bold it. Uh, you keep the standard font throughout. Your whole document should be double-spaced. And so I see often a lot of times, like I have here, that this is not double-spaced. This is like quadruple-spaced. Okay, and that's incorrect. Uh, there should only be, a, in, including the title, there should only be a double space in between the spacing there. And a big thing that I find that Word 2007 does is it puts this, I don't even know what you want to call it, a 2.5 space in between the paragraphs, which is incorrect. So, to fix that, what you need to do is simply do a control A or highlight everything. And if you're writing a paper from the start, you would do this at the start. Now, before you start writing anything, do these. If you already have your paper written out, uh, you can control A, highlight everything. And if you're using 2007, go to the paragraph. And here we want to make sure that everything is double spaced. And the big kicker where you get that spacing is this spacing after. That needs to be changed to zero. That's where you're getting that extra space after your paragraphs is the space after. So change that to zero. Hit OK. And notice now here that now I'm at double space here. Uh, you can turn your, uh, your paragraph or your symbols on there to see if you have extra ones. Uh, you should not. And so throughout the whole document then you should have double space throughout. Okay. Including the works cited page. So now I need to move this works cited page down. The works cited page should be on, a, on its own page. If you're using the MLA, then it's titled works cited. If you're using APA, I believe it's references. 
that's title references. So depending on which style you're using, you have that there. But this should be double space all the way through. All right, another very common mistake I have seen is that with your header, the font and size of your header should match the rest of your document. So I can see right here already that this is not Times New Roman. Okay, and so I need to double click on that, highlight this, go back to your home and change that. This is the Calibri default, so change that to your Times New Roman. It's not smaller font, it should be 12 as well. So you need to make sure you do that. So your header should be the same. Uh, some of you didn't have a header, you should have a header um, right aligned on each page with your last name and the page number. Those are the only two things that you need is your last name and the page number. I guess in the APA style, uh, you may have a, a running header with the title. No, I think still in the APA style, you just have the, right? In the APA, it's the title of your paper. Okay. In the APA, it's the title and that, okay? 